with us then some of those prophetic things in the scriptures where America is fitting right in and fulfilling those? Okay, first of all, uh, she's called Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery is the word mysterion. It means uh, a secret revealed to a select group of people, and I like to say it's a secret revealed to a chosen generation. In Revelation, or Jeremiah 51, 7, Babylon originally is raised up by the hand of the Lord. He says she's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. And she's the seventh of eight providential nations, according to Revelation 17.10. Now, I'm just going to read some scriptures off here. Revelation 17.3 and 4, she's the wealthiest of all nations. In Isaiah 47 and 5 and Revelation 17, she is recognized by the world with the symbol of a woman. Of course, we have the Statue of Liberty and the seven spikes on her head. When that when that statue was originally designed, those spikes were to represent the seven continents of the earth. Babylon sits on the seven mountains of the earth. And Babylon is used to hold down the Antichrist spirit. So you have America that was raised up by God that sent the gospel out, one nation under God, the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, heritage of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is... Uh, she becomes the richest of all the natures. The merchants of the earth trade with her in Revelation 18, 17. And she actually trades 27 different products that are already listed. So she's a nation that has many, many ports. The merchants of the earth come and trade. She's the richest of all nations. But religious Babylon gets in to commercial Babylon according to scripture, and she starts falling into darkness. This is what we're seeing today. We have taken the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've taken them out of government, out of schools, the prayer out of school, and that's been replaced by what Jonathan Kahn calls is the dark trinity, which is the spirit of Baal, the spirit of Ashtoreth, yeah. and the spirit of Moloch, which is the shedding of innocent blood. So this is what we believe that we're seeing right now, the transition as Babylon falls into darkness. But inside of Babylon is a remnant of people. And God says, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins, nor in the plagues that shall come. So as Babylon breaks her covenant with God, it doesn't mean that the remnant inside of her breaks their personal covenant with God. And that's where we're at today, right now on the prophetic time clock. Well, let me, let me ask you about some of those things where religious Babylon is pulling America down and we're falling into those things. You mentioned three spirits there. Could you unpack those a little bit of where, okay. where those things are happening in America? Okay, Baal worship has to do with immorality. It has to do with sexual immorality. Um, Ashtoreth has to do with, that's the female counterpart of Baal. Now this all originated in ancient Babylon with Nimrod. But Baal is the male counterpart of this god of fertility. Ashtoreth is the second female part. And what they did is they put a pole in the ground in ancient Babylon, carved it in the shape of a woman, and then they had orgies, both men and women, both priests, men with men, women with women, around these poles. Now, in America today, we don't have any poles carved in women, but we have 3,500 strip clubs in the nation with live women hanging off them, and men come and they throw their money. So this is a form of Ashtoreth worship. And then the third part of that dark trinity is Moloch. When you have immorality and you have a nation fall into this darkness, they have children that they don't want. Then they start sacrificing their children to Moloch. And the number one reason they sacrifice children to Moloch in the Old Testament is because they thought they would receive a financial blessing. The number one cause for abortion today is people who don't think they can afford to raise a child. So here we have the dark trinity of Babylon, Mr. Babylon, the religion. And if people don't come back to God, 
God will judge that because he judged Israel, the covenant nation, all through history when they entered into Baal worship. So our job at Prophecy USA is to call people to come back to Jesus, come back to God, and, and come out of the sin and get into covenant with God because we feel that judgment is coming to America. What is coming next for America? Because I think a lot of times with prophecy, we want it to feel good, we want to hear prosperity, but there's a, real, there's a truth and there's real things that God has in store for America. Can you tell us about that? I think uh, I asked Oral Roberts this uh, several years ago, uh, six months before he died, and he said, Rick, I believe that there's going to be a separation between the wheat and the chaff. And right now what you're seeing is God is pouring out his spirit uh, in Kentucky and in different regions, and he's reaching out to the young people, and he's saying, come to me, come back to me, let me love you, let me protect you. There's going to be gross darkness and also a bright light shining, and that's the separation of the wheat and the chaff. You know, when you look at the Grammys, and you see open Satan worship right on television. This would have never happened 15 or 20 years ago, but now it's the norm. And so the nation, there's a separation coming and the light of the gospel will get brighter. I believe we will see a move of signs and wonders, very similar of what is happening uh, in Kentucky, but the darkness is going to get darker and just like Pharaoh and the Exodus, it said that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and did signs and wonders before he judged Pharaoh and before the Exodus came for the children of Israel to flee out of the bondage. But what do we do as Christians with this uh, in view of what you're sharing? Uh, I, I think the number one thing is to strive to be like Paul. Paul said that the life of Christ might be made manifest in me. You know, get back into the Word, study the Word, have communion with God, get close to Him, and listen for that still small voice to be used as a vessel of kindness, of helping others, and stay close to God because there's a second mystery, not only mystery Babylon the Great, but there's a mystery when Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed instantly. When Jesus comes to rapture the church, we want to be ready for that. So you want to be involved uh, with the body of Christ, a body of believers, and, and ask God to show you on a daily basis, can, how, who can I be kind to? Can I help someone here? Uh, be the best employee you can be, be the best father you can be, be the best mother you can be, be the best daughter or son you can be, and just stay in this word and let this word come alive inside of you. That's, that's on an individual basis because we cannot control what is happening in Bible prophecy. God said, I have spoken it, I will also do it, I have purposed it, and I will bring it to pass. You just want to make sure that you're walking close with Jesus. And that's, that's the best advice I could give to anyone. But America right now has fallen into uh, several curses. We don't have time to go into it. But since the Biden administration take over, we've had our walls fall down. Our walls are down. We have 5 million people come in. Um, we're, we're in debt, a debtor nation. We should be a lender nation if we're in the blessing. Um, and then, of course, in Afghanistan, they left their people there, and, and we fled from a little Taliban army. The strongest, most powerful nation in the history of the world runs from a Taliban army while they say, death to America. So um, when I'm watching what's happening over there, my calling is, is basically North America, but these are birth pangs of the Antichrist rising and, and you see darkness all around the world, uh, and the darkness is also here happening, but we don't have to live in the darkness. We can live in the light. And Paul said, for those of you who are troubled, rest with us. Um, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall appear with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
But instantaneously, when Babylon's judgment comes, we will be taken out. That is the exodus that's coming. So we want to be rapture ready. We want to be as close to God as we can. We want to walk in kindness and love and fulfill whatever calling that God has for you. Get close to God and stay under his, his covering. And the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And that's what we need to do. So all of this that's happening around us are birth pains of what happens when the world rejects God and the darkness rises. What is your thoughts on how far along the prophetic calendar we are? Well, the new world order is rising and that is the beast, what they want to do. We can see the eighth nation rising. We can see the seventh nation, which is Babylon the Great. We are falling into darkness. Nobody knows the day or the hour um, I don't put any prophetic time clock on this, but I will say this. I received this revelation 36 years ago. And we're 36 years closer to the second coming than when I received it. <laughs> That's the best I can do, Tom. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but we can certainly see the signs of the times around us.